Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. We have been regularly, over the last six weeks, talking to a coach from the Geelong and District Footy League football section as we come up towards the season. We're up to team number seven. It's the Anarchy Football Club and a name you probably wouldn't have heard of around uh, the Geelong footy traps, Daniel Bunworth, new coach uh, at Anarchy. Welcome, Daniel. Hi, Rob. Thanks for having me, mate. Certainly good to uh, have you on, and we'll probably be talking to you through the year as the season rolls out. But as I said, there'll be many people who will not have heard of you, don't know anything about you. Tell us a bit about your football journey. Um, Well, it started a little bit of a while ago now, back um, probably... In my senior football 2003, I'd say, so 18 years ago, and I was a Werribee um, junior growing up, so I, was, um, I grew up in Werribee, um, played all my juniors at Werribee, went across and um, trained as a young fella at the Werribee VFL, um, went across to Lara for a year, and they asked me to play some senior football, and I suppose developed my game there, and then I bypassed them, and actually played for Port Melbourne for a number of years um, before going back to local football and spending a long lot of time at um, the Winnervale Football Club and um, building them up with a number of uh, dedicated people to um, win the Division 2 flag and get into Division 1. And then pretty much here I am today, um, play coach of the Anarchy Football Club. So uh, doing a bit of maths, you're probably something like 35 or 6 years of age and... Uh, still feeling fit and healthy and, and uh, able to make a contribution on the ground, which is good because Anarchy will need that on-field direction, I would imagine? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, well, good math, math. I am 35, turning 36 in a couple of months, so you'll spot on there. Um, um, yeah, the body's feeling pretty well. I've always been involved in, in sport growing up. I've been involved in athletics from the age of five. Uh, I'm still involved with that now, and I think that's um, held me in good stead to, I suppose, play as long as I have so far and hopefully I've got a few more good games left in me to come. How long ago did you get bitten by the coaching bug? Um, I've been an assistant coach for a number of years, probably since about 2012. I was under Luke Dennelly at the Winnervale Football Club. Um, so I was there for, I was assistant coach there for about three or four years. And then I was actually player coach at Winnervale for two years as well. Um, and then, obviously, now I'm um, across at the Motts Road and giving it another crack. That's very good. The uh, the passion for coaching did that was that sort of thrust upon you to to get you in an assistance role, or was it something you really looked to do at that stage of your career? Because going back then, uh, doing a bit more maths, you're probably that, about that 26, 27 years of age. Um, Neil. Yeah. Luke actually asked me to sort of jump on board on the on the coaching group and um, I had a little bit of a think about it and I decided that it would be, I suppose, good for my um, my future development if I did want to go into senior coaching um, at a later stage. And um, it was really good because the coaching group was really um, really solid at Wynnum Vale and had a lot of um, um, continuity um, in, the, in the people that we had in the group and um, we developed that really well. Um, and then... The 2017-18 season when I was the actual playing coach, um, I wasn't sure if I was 100% ready to take that on board um, at that stage, um, but I did decide to um, give it a go, and I um, did learn a lot from that. It was quite difficult, I suppose, um, coaching a lot of premiership teammates. um, found that quite hard, but um, I suppose as coming down to anarchy now, um, not going there not knowing many of the players, if any of the players, uh, it gives me the opportunity to actually be the coach first rather than, I suppose, their teammate. Dan, it's uh, Josh Barnes here on the other mic, mate. Uh, Having a a year off when you've got 300 games plus under your belt, was that hard to keep yourself in in physical shape, I suppose? I know it sounds like you're obviously quite fit, but how did you sort of deal with that in your mid-30s, having a year off footy? 
Um, yeah, I, was, I, was, I suppose I've always had that dedication to try and um, keep myself fit, um, keep health and health. You know, I suppose pretty healthy as well. And um, luckily for me, during that lockdown, um, I'm a school teacher, so I had to do a lot of work from home. So I tried to get into that routine of still getting up early, going for a run, um, like a lot of people did. Built a bit of a home gym, so I was going to the shed as well and um, trying to keep myself fit that way. Um, so I suppose, in a way, it almost feels like a bit of a blessing. I was probably thinking about um, hanging up the boots for a couple of years now and having that year off and this um, challenge um, that's been thrown in front of me has sort of given me a new lease of life and um, I'm definitely looking forward to getting on the field this year and um, who knows what happens in 2022 and beyond. The, the good thing about when you're a playing coach is you, you get in charge of your own magnet. Where are you going to put yourself on the field um, in 2021? Uh, well, well, hopefully um, I'm definitely the first one picked. That'll be <laughs> really good. Um, I'll pick myself, but I know that some of my assistants, they might have a few words with me. But um, now I'm, I'm looking at... I've, I've played a lot of the last number of years through the midfield, um, I'm look, we do have a few um, bit of depth in the midfield now, actually, with a few a few boys coming in, which is exciting. So I'm hoping to possibly play myself around that sort of half-back area. Um, you can sort of see the play developing, and I'll be able to direct on the ground as well. Um, so both in a, I suppose, um, player and coaching role, um, half-back would suit. Daniel, you uh, spoke about the, the difference and pressure on you coaching and directing the group while you're involved in the play yourself, uh, so the importance of off-ground support. Have you brought that with you from your history or, or have you, are you just relying on the, the people at Anarchy to, to give you that confidence you need? Um, no, definitely. I um, do have um, quite a solid off-field group. So I brought along um, a fellow named Sean Allen. He was with me as a senior assistant at Winnervale. Um, so he's jumped on board. He actually moved to Lara um, not long after I did, so it was pretty much a bit of a perfect match. And um, I've also got um, someone named Dave Taylor. So he was um, the reserves coach for Hoppers Crossing um, in the WRFL for a number of years, um, and they were lucky enough to win probably two or three premierships in the reserve side um, during his reign. Um, so he'll be our midfield coach and... I've got um, a teammate, an ex-teammate, Nathan Van Holst, who has also moved down this way as well, um, and he's going to be in control of the forwards. Um, and then recently we did pick up um, a reserves coach um, by the name of Wayne McCoy. Um, he has um, coached before um, out in Tasmania, um, and he is an old um, anarchy boy, actually, so um, he's jumped on board as well. So we do have... Um, I, I suppose I've got a lot of people to to talk to and a lot of set of eyes um, that will be watching the play as well as the game is going on. Now what's interesting uh, with you, the, the Anarchy Football Club would have no doubt done a lot of uh, research on you and uh, watching um, you from afar and getting information, but for someone who's at Wyndham Vale and Werribee Centrals are close by, how much did you know about the Geelong and District Footy League uh, when, when Anarchy first came knocking on your door? Um, not, no, not a lot. Uh, I pretty much I knew um, about Werribee Centrals and um, knew a number of players who play there and still know a number of players who do play there. Um, but apart from that, not too much. So I have been doing a little bit of homework and trying to um, get up to scratch with what I should know and how the style of play, um, um, what the style of play in the GDFL Um Spoken to a lot of people, but I'm sure they'll learn a lot as the season goes on. You mentioned uh, some recruits at the end of last year. The club was very, very much up and about. They had a, a slow start, managed a, some really good, solid performances mid-year. But the last six weeks, they were good, and it was quite an optimistic finish. Uh, the loss of a couple of key players, Wilson and uh, Weagle in particular, left a bit of a hole, and, and we on the periphery weren't quite sure what to expect. But uh, what, what sort of a, of a group have you now assembled after recruiting's all complete and you've had a three months of pre-season? Um, well, I think that we're, we're building a real good, a real good solid group. Um, what I've been really impressed with during the pre-season is how well and how easy the, um, the group has been able to, I suppose, bond together. Um, on night one of pre-season training, I sort of 
split them up to the Anarchy Boys and I suppose new recruits and um, even then it was evident that you know, it was sort of a 50-50 split down the middle so there'll be quite a few changes and um, it would take a bit of time to getting used to each other but um, I suppose on the training track and even off field the boys have really bonded really well. Um, obviously it'll take a bit of time on the field to get to know um, everyone's strengths and weaknesses and the way they play. Um, but no, that's um, you know, we're really looking forward to seeing um, how they do, how we do go in a few practice matches coming up. Of those new faces that you brought in, have there been any that have sort of stood out? Who, who are we going to be looking out for um, of those new guys? Um, I think we do have a number of faces that definitely will um, play a big part in on how we go in 2021. Um, a couple of them would be a few midfield boys. Um, Adam Miraclis, he's from um, Tarnit, um, and he's come come on board, and he's uh, as hard as a cat's head, and he sees the ball and he gets the ball, and he can use it well, and he can be dangerous if he's resting up forward too. Um, so really looking forward to seeing how he performs in the GDFL. Um, Matt O'Keefe, he's also been playing football in the WRFL previously. Um, he played at Parkside, and in um, a bit of a scratch match that we had the other day, um, he was a bit of a standout. And then um, up forward as well, we've got um, a player, Dale Collins. He's um, actually he's an ex-teammate of mine as well. So he's early, thir- early 30s and um, he knows the, game, knows the game well and um, he's a smart footballer. So we'll be looking, looking to him to be one of our key targets um, running, running through the midfield and hitting up the forwards. My spies have thrown the name Darren Morrish in. Uh, yeah, Darren, he's another one um, that I suppose I've grown up playing against most of the, most of the time. Um, he was a Werribee boy, moved down Torquay, Jan, Jack way, and um, he's a very very fit ruckman. So he'll he'll run all day. And um, again, I'm looking forward to seeing how him and also a few of those names that I um, just threw up in the midfield um, see how they connect together and um, work as one. So uh, you mentioned midfield depth, which is very important in modern football and it might allow you to to play a, a running role off half-back, but uh, scoring was a problem for Anarchy last year. Do you think you've got um, a forward line that's going to be potent enough to keep you in most games? Uh, definitely hoping. Um, around, obviously, Dale Collins, who I spoke about before. Um, we've also got... Um, a, Players such as Jaron Corey, who's another recruit, um, he's dangerous um, around around goals. Um, Elliot Birch, another fellow that got him on board, he's a bit of a nuggety left footer, so he, he could be dangerous and kick a couple as well. Um, and we do have a number of, I suppose, those half forward types um, that, again, during that scratch match that we had, um, did seem comfortable working up the ground, working hard, and doubling back and did look to get dangerous on occasions the other night. So I, I think that um, we do have the, play, um, the players there that may be able to you know, hit the scoreboard um, often. It, um, it's been a, a quite a finals drought, I suppose, for Anarchy um, over the last almost couple of decades. Does that weigh on you at all, or is that something you have to put out of the back of your mind? Uh, no, it doesn't weigh on me um, at much at all, to be honest. Um, he, for president, he did tell me that I think it had been... 22 years, I think, um, since the last time Anarchy played finals. Um, but that was a bit of motivation and a bit of um, one of the reasons why I thought that I would I would take the position. Um, it was a challenge, and I think you know um, it's almost not, not not that it's weighing on me. It's just it's almost a bit of a free throw at the stumps. Um, I can build a team and a list that I want, and um, you know, I suppose work hard to get get Anarchy back into the finals race and um, hopefully, you know, if it's not this year, in the next couple of years, um, the Anarchy Football Club can taste finals again. Uh, Daniel, I don't know the football club environment you've had in the past, but you may have already worked there by now. You've you've walked into a very strong family, fun-loving uh, group and, and the, other, the thing that makes it work really well that, that is uh, supported by a lot of clubs around the Geelong region is the connection with netball and football. Um, we'll talk about the girls in a minute, but have, have you picked up on that yet? Uh, yeah, definitely. 
Um, I feel like, even though I've only been there for that five months or so, I feel like I've been there for a couple of years now and um, almost, um, I, I suppose, I almost feel like you know, a piece of furniture in the club room, so to speak. Um, the, they've been really, um, the, 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 the committee, um, Heath, um, Wayne, who's our vice president, um, and even the whole committee, they've been um, really opening and, uh, it's been it's been really good. It's been a bit of a bit of breath of fresh air, um, just being around a real tight, connected club, which is exciting too. So, just on the netball side, we had a little bit of, of a segment last Saturday morning on Sports Fix. Uh, there, there's been a few key members of the netball team have left the club, and the, the club's a bit short of numbers at the moment in the netball section. So, if if you feel like you want to uh, make a comeback or change of club or start up your, your netball career if you're a younger person thinking about it, um, please contact the, the Anarchy Football Netball Club. It, it is a great family club. That's not in dispute. I think everyone that visits the Anarchy Football Club, no matter where you come from, you go away with a pretty warm feeling that it's that it's a, regardless of the performance on court and on the footy ground day are a very wholesome, tight family club. And if you want to get involved in something like that, Megan Sproul is a netball coordinator. Uh, you could email her at uh, netball at anarchy FNC. So that's anarchyfootballnetballclub.com, netball at anarchy FNC.com, or ring Megan directly on 0421 977 That's 0421 977 Get out to Anarchy and have yourself a good, fun family feel. And after five months in the place, if you've already picked up on that, Daniel, it's a, it must be a pretty solid recommendation. Um, no, most definitely. Uh, it, it is a great club. Um, the boys were brought in. A lot of them are family men as well, so there'll be plenty of plenty of children running around with the navy blue and red on, on as well um, throughout the season. So it's a great club to jump on board and... Um, keep fit and uh, get to meet some new faces. Excellent, mate. Thank you very much for your time this morning. We really appreciate how quickly you've got in to support us. We'll definitely be talking to you through the year now that I've got your number, but uh, we, we honestly wish you all the very best. Uh, you, you've, you've come to a very good competition that's improving rapidly and it's a lot more even than it was. Um, I, I would expect you would be thinking about finals or is it, is it uh, you, you think it might be a year away yet? Um, no, always, always play footy to you know uh, do do our best. So definitely, finals are in the, in our minds. Um, we'll break the season down. Obviously, it's a it's a real long season, so we'll break the season down into three or four sort of match blocks and um, continue to develop our goals and expectations as, as we go along. So it's official, Barnsley. We'll have ten teams yep. in the top five in the GDFL at least Jeez, this it's year. It's going to be a good final series, isn't it? It is going to be a ripper. No, mate, we we love your confidence. So we we certainly like the optimistic tone you've given. I reckon there'll be a lot of people listening this morning. We'll be looking forward uh, to see how things go on the ground. Good luck, mate, and thank you for your time. No worries. Thanks a lot, guys. Good on you, Daniel Bunworth, new coach of uh, Anarchy, and that uh, that's a pretty solid uh, preview after what looked like a disappointing pre-season with the, with the names that we'd heard they lost, but he's pretty upbeat. Yeah, they, they lost a, a huge, I guess, swath of, of players um, at Anki, but they've um, certainly brought in some good names by the sounds of things, and, and Bunworth himself has, has a lot of experience. Um, if you pluck him off a half-back line, as I said, he's played 300-plus games and certainly knows his footy inside and out, so it sounds like he's brought a couple with him, and um, Anki will still be very, very competitive at, at the very worst.